Hi guys, so Anarchy Models is coming back to Kickstarter with a whole new system of templates to add on to the system that they had created before with great success on Kickstarter, by the way. Yeah, yeah, thank you for everybody who backed me. <laughs> so we took it as an opportunity to invite Brian from Anarchy Models to come in and spend some time with us here in Studio One to kind of uh, take us through the, the new stenciling system that he's put together, which complements the, the system that's already there, but also as an opportunity for, for me and you to find out more about airbrushing and to try and see if we can learn some uh, learn some things about airbrushing demystify airbrushing a little bit by, dare i say it yeah. so um brian welcome thank you good to have <laughs> you back on beast of war um so you're coming out with a, a a new product that you're taking the kickstarter okay That's right. which is um it's a different product from last time. So this is, um, uh, and originally I thought, uh, is this going to replace what, what you had done before? But no. it's actually, it's a, it's, it's a complementary yeah, product, Yeah, that's right. Isn't it's it? kind so. of a sister product for the, the HD stencils we did before. Yeah. Um, these ones are, are a reusable product, whereas the HD stencils were only semi-reusable. Yeah. Um, so the idea with these is you, they're, they're reusable. Um, as long as you don't just screw it up and throw it around, mm -hmm. they're going to be almost infinitely reusable. Um, you can wash them with solvents or just airbrush cleaner. Um, yeah. So the, these are good. These are quite happily resist solvents yeah, and stuff that's like right. that. Yeah, that's right. They're clean. Um, and the idea with these, but we we had the HD stencils, which was our first ones. So now we I, have a bunch of videos on yeah. those. So if you're interested, um, go and have a look. Um, they were they were kind of a, a sticky material yeah. that you stuck down, that's and right. then you gradually peeled yeah. bits off and applied your layers of paint over the yeah. top then. The, the idea with those is they're very good about going around curves and angles and very good for doing camouflage and things. Mm -hmm. um, whereas these ones are more aimed at a, a smoother model, um, so such as these where you've got only recessed detail yeah. um, or doing terrain. Um, and the idea is it will last longer for doing terrain and things like that. Mm -hmm. um, and also be faster. So we're calling these the HS stencils, so high speed stencils. Yeah. Um, so they're, they're faster to use rather than having to stick them down. Um, and uh, it takes a bit longer. Um, but it's a more precise, crisp edge with the stuck down stencil. Yeah. Um, these you actually ones, have some, yep. uh, uh, an example of the, of the difference here. So that's the stuck down stencil. Right. And it gives you that effect, yeah. Um, and then you have a comparison here of the, the edge that you're likely to get with the HS stencil. Yeah, so as you can see, so, the, 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 the scales aren't as defined as the uh, the ones on here, um, but some people want that. Um, one of the yeah. things I had after the Kickstarter was people contacted me, can I make a stencil where you don't get a crisp edge on them? Mm -hmm. They want the grid to be softer, yeah. or the camouflage to be softer. Um, and so this is one of the reasons why we came up with this. Well, fantastic, well look, what better way to check it out than to get Brian to actually demonstrate it for us and just pick up some bits and pieces about airbrushing as we go. Now, uh, Brian, I am desperately trying to overcome what I'm almost calling an airbrush phobia. A lot, okay. of, pe a lot of people are, are scared to even try it. I'll go to shows to, to demonstrate the stencils and things and I'll ask people if they've, if they've had a airbrush and they'll know. Like, yeah. Would, would you want to have a go? I've got it here with me. Oh no! And it's like, <laughs> people, you shouldn't be scared of airbrushing. It's an amazing tool for the hobby. Yeah, everyone should have one, really. Yeah. Um, well, the, so. diffi the the difficulty is, and we're going to be doing a, a kind of a series of videos, both both here front stage on Beast of War, but also some other ones in backstage. Where we're going to be talking about some of the specifics of airbrushing. But I think the the key is is first is to is to have a go at it. But you want to make sure generally you're having a go at it with a with a pretty good airbrush because. If you go with something that's a rubbish airbrush, you're going to have a rubbish experience. So. Yeah, I have no end of people um, telling me how they're having issues. I mean, I've had a few people come to the class. Oh, well, I just can't get on with the uh, airbrushes. There's no end of problems. I'll look at it and pieces of it are bent or damaged or just generally badly made to start with. Yeah. Um, yes, you can buy a cheap £20 airbrush off eBay. Is it going to be any good and last you? Unlikely, you know. Yeah. Um, with airbrushing, you, you uh, like most things these days, you get what you pay for. If you pay for a a, a cheap uh, a cheap thing that's just you know, and you can't get parts for them either. Yeah. Um, if you do break it, you you try and contact them. Oh, just buy another one and take the parts out. 
Yeah. What could that, you know, yeah. you end up with half a dozen broken airbrushes and none of them work. Yeah. Um, if you buy a decent one, you can normally get parts for it very easily. Um, and you have less hassles, you know. Uh, quite often people will come to me with a problem. I'll say, unfortunately, it's generally the airbrush here that's the issue. Yeah. Try this one. They're like, wow, this is amazing, and they'll buy a new one. You know, it's... Okay. Well, like I said, over the course of a series of videos, we're going to be going to more details on what to look for in airbrushes and compressors and stuff like that. But, Brian, we have a nice dark Eldar model here. You're going to do a demonstration of a kind of like a dark to light uh, using the, the high-speed template. Now, this is a dragon scale That's template. right, yeah. So this is one of the smaller ones. Um, we've got various different sizes of uh, the grids here. Um, this is the large one. Uh, there's a medium one there. Um, and there will be an even smaller one than this as well. Um, eventually, these are all the prototypes. Yeah. Um, so we don't need this straight away. Mm -hmm. um, start off, I mean, you could start off with that straight away, but from what I'm planning to do here, I'm just going to lighten up this uh, black base coat slightly. Um, this is a, a, a satin base coat. You can see it's got a bit of a shine to it. Mm -hmm. This isn't ideal. Um, a matte base coat is much better to use. So if you can get that, um, mm -hmm. you'll, you'll find the paint sticks better to it. So um, and that, that's basically the choice of primer then you yeah. put down. So yeah. And another, while we're talking about primers, there's another really good point to make because I've been confused by this. And uh, there's... Uh, I know this is going to sound so silly, but there is a there's a, uh, no comparison between a spray can primer and an airbrush. They do different things, and they don't act in the same way. That's because right. One of the things I find with the uh, with primers is you know I've tried to mask things off, or I've tried to spray the bottom of a model and the top of a model and have them different colors. But I find that the 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 spray can particles seem to almost envelop envelop around yeah, it. Yeah, it's just something to do with the solvents and the, the the chemicals in there. The particles just tend to float along and and do wrap round things where you wouldn't expect it to go. Yeah. Um, with the airbrush, you can get away with masking. Uh, well, sorry, without masking. Yeah. Uh, a lot more than you would think. I mean, mm -hmm. even so much as um, sometimes if you've got quite an angular model, if you yeah. hold it in a certain direction. You can use the model itself to mask off the other faces. Yes. Um, and whereas a spray can wouldn't do that, the paint mm. would just sort of float round and paint the other side as well. Well, even before we started this video, I watched Brian just do this underside, um, and you know that was just a uh, airbrushed. It, it it took him minutes to to do some test pieces on that to show me. But look how clean the difference is. You know, there's no overspray, there's no particles. No, and there's been no masking around. here whatsoever. Yeah. You, know, you see that the paint just suddenly stops at the edge. Um, and even here where it does curve round, the paint doesn't follow round a lot. It's, it stops yeah. um, quite suddenly. So as you say, it's not the same as a rattle cam where it's just going to go everywhere. Yeah. Um, it's going to go where you aim it as long as you've got a, a decent double action airbrush. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, Brian, take it away and let's see how we go about uh, right, achieving so this effect. Let's check we've got the right colour first of all. So you can obviously use any colours you like. You don't have to use what I'm using here. Um, now, during these demonstrations, we're using the brand new uh, Vallejo model color, or game air range. Um, so, uh, Brian, can you tell us what colours from the, that you're using? So we're using a combination of game air and Vallejo kind of like transparent. Paint. Yeah, so um, start off with, we've got um, the uh, Game Air, uh, Dead White, and uh, Alien Purple, which is those two there. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm also gonna be using the Game Color inks. Um, now, although they call them an ink, I would, think they're more of a transparent paint than an ink mm -hmm. that this um most inks is like you would get from an art shop it's an ink you could put it in a pen and write with it mm -hmm. this is it's more of a transparent paint in my mind but mm -hmm. they just call it an ink i think um but it's it's good for all sorts of things and, and i'm going to use it as a transparent paint here rather than yeah. a than, than an actual ink and a shader we've got those two so all i'm going to do is just use these four paints um if i can get my fat fingers out of the way Mm -hmm. and you can see them all um, and then you'll get the uh, effect like we've got on this side here um, you could then go in with highlights and stuff but worry about that later yeah so start off with it's just this alien purple so 
get something if I can see it. I'm just going to pick out uh, the front, the leading edge, and some of the raised areas uh, mainly. Um, so. This is a kind of a highlighting process. Yes, yeah, I mean yeah. you could, as you can see, you could just leave it at that and not have, you know. Uh, some people would be quite happy with just for that, but um, yeah. if you add some more stuff to it, it will be even more impressive. So you can see, I'm just feathering in the purple to this back edge here. It's still mainly black, um, and towards the front, it's a bit lighter where I'm building up the paint more. That's one of the things with the airbrush. A lot of people don't realise is you can have a, a huge variation in colour just by using one paint. Mm -hmm. um, so you can just build the pe build the paint up and use of thinners and stuff, you can make that happen even more. So you can have a, just layer it and layer it and, and you would have like 10 different colours, but it's yeah. only one actual pot you've used. Mm -hmm. um, so you can see that here. Um, so I've just done a very faint pass along this edge here with the purple. And you can see it's not black anymore but it's not as strong as here. I've done a few more passes. Yeah. Um, so we'll just build that up a bit more. You can see the, the paint build up to get a stronger color. Now already I'm loving this because, you know, I've went at a Valkyrie with a paintbrush and had the most horrible <laughs> time because as, as thin as I wanted to put the paints down, ultimately somewhere it's going to end up looking gloopy. Um, whereas an airbrush, that just seems to be going down you so far. You try brush so painting beautiful. it. Yes. Yeah, I mean, for years people have been trying to brush paint their vehicles and they end up streaking no matter what you do. Yes. And, you know, an airbrush is an amazing tool for doing vehicles. I mean, for organic stuff as well, so big monsters and things. Mm -hmm. But for vehicles, it really comes into its own. You can get a really nice, even coat. Um, and you've just seen there, I've just done that in a couple of minutes and half of it. So I've been explaining what's going on. Yeah. Um, you know, it's a, it's a great hobby tool. So I'll just carry on doing the other side now. Yeah. So again, you can see the paint build up with lots of layers. If you blast the paint on really heavy, it's just going to puddle and run and it's going to make a mess. Mm -hmm. um, so it's better to do it in light coats and, and build it up. And a decent airbrush will uh, will give you that, that control. Yeah. Um, because an airbrush is not an on-off thing, is it? They're, they're... I mean, there are ones that... It's, called a single action airbrush where you press the button you get paint and, that, and that's it you're, you're yeah. kind of, you have a small amount of adjustment on the front but it's not an awful lot whereas this um, a, a, a decent dual action airbrush will do a pencil line to a big fat line to do and everything coats, in between and everything in between yeah. and on the fly there's no adjustments mm -hmm. it's all about the distance to the page and how much you pull the trigger or press the or pull the trigger back on the other ones yeah um, so yeah so, so we want to, for at least for our hobby anyway, avoid the the single action ones. And yeah, I mean, action if, if, if all you ever want to do with it is base coat with it, they're okay. But if you if you do that, you're missing out on a huge amount of different things you can do with the airbrush. Yeah, weathering, shading, uh, highlighting. Mm -hmm. um, you know, a, a single action one just can't really cope with coming in close and putting a pencil line down one of these uh, contours. Yeah. Um, so a dual action is definitely the way to go. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we'll just carry on. So I'm trying to get a nice fade here so the front of the wing's lighter than the back, but you mm -hmm. still want a bit of paint there um, and you'll see why later on. In fact, what I might do is I might leave part of this tail back here a bit too black, and you'll see the see the difference. Well, I've got to say, even at this stage. I'd be quite happy to paint some details on that and feel the model even looking like that. So yeah, well, that's uh, it, you know, and we've been explaining stuff as we've been going and how long yeah. it's taken me to do it. It's taken, you know, just a few minutes um, and it already, as you say, looks quite cool. Yeah. Um, where the airbrush doesn't have as much 
forces the spray can, the paint doesn't get into the cracks quite as much. Yeah. And you can still see all the cracks and it doesn't look very flat, like mm -hmm. a spray can can make it look flat. Yeah. Um, so as you say, it does look quite cool just as it is. Well, as cool as it looks, <laughs> what's the next step? Uh, well, the next, stitch is to make, next step is to make sure it's fully dry. Um, if you try and paint it too soon, you're just going to scratch the paintwork with your hands mm -hmm. um, or with the stencil itself. Um, so I'm just going to give this a quick blast with a hairdryer just to make sure it's fully dry. Right, we'll let that dry and we'll be right back. So Brian, we've taken a couple of minutes to allow it to dry. Yep. Um, where do we go from here? Um, we, as we say, it's got to be fully dry for this. So I mean, the way I test is find a bit that's not terribly important and just try and scratch it gently with your fingernail. Um, if you don't scratch through the paint um, to, back to the primer, yeah. then you're ready to go. Um, it, with these stencils, if you're not careful, you can actually just rub the paint off if it's not fully dry. Mm -hmm. um, so the next stage is to do the actual stencils. Yep. Um, so we need the white next, which is okay. in here. So this is the dead white from the game air range of Vallejo. Yep. That's right. Now we're really liking this paint from Vallejo. It's um, the coverage is great. The pigments are just brilliant in these. I've got to say, you know, if you're going to go down the route of airbrushing, it's worth investing in in airbrush paint. Isn't yeah, it? So. yeah. I mean, you, you can uh, buy normal model paints and thin them. Um, but the airbrush quality paints, the, the, the particles are ground so much finer, yeah. especially the metallics. Don't even think about putting a normal uh, model paint metallic through the airbrush. It's just going to clog it in seconds. Yeah. Um, but the, the, the Vallejo Game Air and the Model Air, um, they ground so fine, it's, it's like a metallic cream almost. Yeah. Um, and uh, the same with the normal paints. They're just a lot easier to use. But always use them with their own branded thinner and cleaner, mm -hmm. and you'll find you have less problems. Um, customer recently was saying, oh, I just can't get the airbrush clean. Yeah. What are you using? Oh, well, I'm using this other brand of cleaner. I said, well, try, try the actual one for the paint you're using. Yes. Oh, oh it's cleaned it in seconds. Um, so because the formulas and resins it. and stuff are yeah. very different in each of the different um, brands. Always, always try and brand match things. If you have yeah. problems and try and contact the manufacturer, the first thing they're going to say is, oh, well, you're not using our or a cleaner yeah and they're like you say they're all formulated to work with it with themselves incredibly well uh -huh. um and some people i'll say oh you thin it with water um you can it doesn't break the paint down as well yeah um or some people say about doing it with screen wash mm -hmm. uh well screen wash has got ammonia in it you don't mm -hmm. you're going to be atomizing that into the air you're, yeah. you're going to be breathing that ammonia in it's not good for you <laughs> yeah um so don't use anything that's not meant to be used in the airbrush uh, yeah. in there um, and try and brand match things and you'll have less problems. Brian, I'm distinctly getting the impression here that airbrushing is uh, is a lot more straightforward than I think, provided I just follow the rules and the products yeah, that are yeah. there. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately there's a lot of uh, armchair experts on the internet that will tell you things that aren't true. Yeah. Um, so uh, try and get some good advice on things and, and, and follow, try and brand match things, follow the manufacturer's advice and you'll have less issues. Okay. Um, and with airbrushes, if it isn't broke, don't fix it. Don't be tempted just to don't fiddle with it. Don't fiddle with it. You know, yeah. clean it properly, and you'll you know you'll have less issues. Um, so yeah. Okay, right. So uh, stencil time. Right. So let's just uh, check that's working. It's been sat there a little while. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm just going to pick out uh, some of the areas with the stencil. Obviously, we can't go over these really uh, raised things here. Um, it's not going to wrap around there enough for you to better get the stencil on there. Yeah. So you just pick out the areas where it is going to work, um, like I'm going to do now. Now, some people, there's a bit of an argument with this one, mm -hmm. which way round the scales go? Um, some people say, uh, I like to have it so that the front is this rounded edge. Yeah. Some people tell me, oh no, you, the scale should be this way around. Yeah. Well, I say, whichever looks coolest to you. Yeah. Use your models, <laughs> you know, you use it however you like. Oh, but scales aren't like that. Well, I call this dragon scales. Do we, do we know what dragon scales are like? <laughs> anyway, so, uh, and when you put the stencil on, make sure you keep the scales all in the same direction. If you have it turned round, it does look a bit weird. Yeah. Um, it doesn't matter too much with the hexagon one, uh -huh. um, but the scales, they all do kind of need to go in the Point same in the way. the same direction, okay. Um, so let's just apply this here. Find a way it can hold it properly. There we go. Okay. 
So it is a case of just put it down and just hold it in place that's with it, this one. That's it. Yeah. Um, so where I'm holding it here with my thumb, uh, you need to try not to take the paint all the way to there because your thumb's going to mask it off. Yeah. Um, I mean, I could try and hold it up there a bit better. There we go. Mm -hmm. um, you could tape it down, um, but the idea of these is it's quick. You it's don't you don't need to tape yeah. it down. Uh -huh. um, you also do need to be careful not to spray over here where you've got this straight line. We're just concentrating here where the scales are. Okay. Um, so we're just going to feather it in from the front, a bit like we were doing with the light purple earlier. Uh -huh. And there we go. Oh, it's as simple as that. That's it. And as quick as that as yep. well. Okay, yep. Um, so we'll just dry that just with the air now. There's no paint at the moment, it's just the air. And just dry it off a bit. And then I'm going to do the same on the other side. Now, that, taking that moment to dry it, Brian, means you're less likely to rub it off with your That's fingers. That's right, yeah. Just when I'm putting a stencil on or turning it around, uh, you could wipe the paint by accident. Um, mm -hmm. So just drying it off uh, can save you hassles later. Um, one thing you do want to be careful of though, um, the, the side you've been spraying paint onto, you want to keep that as the same side all the time. If you flip it over without drying the stencil, you, mm -hmm. you can get paint on the model. Um, so let's just check which way around I've got that. And apply it to the other side, same as before. Making sure they're all straight, there you go. There we go, mm -hmm. some more scales there. Um, so I know we like to put some in the, the recesses here. Yeah. Um, it's, so it's, it's got it already, it's got a, almost like a carbon fibery kind of texture to it, yeah. doesn't it? It's... Yeah, I'll we'll just put this one in the paint, so we'll have to make sure that's clean, yeah. So let's put some on the... Uh, on the fuselage. On some yeah. areas down here, look quite cool with it. Mm -hmm. So with these stencils you can fold them and it will just spring back into uh, into shape you know you, as long as you're not don't just tear it up it's going to flip back to where it was yeah so they're really flexible so the idea is you can just fold it in half and, and put it into the gaps uh -huh. where you need it to go like so and again if you're going to be holding it onto the model of your fingers you've got to make sure you don't take the paint back as far as where your finger is yeah or you'll uh, end up with a gap. So that's that bit done. Mm -hmm. Let's go around this side. And you want to try and keep them even if you can. So there's some scales there, mm -hmm. and I'm just going to put a few just on the front here. Yeah. So. Being a bit fiddly, this one on the front. It's got so many curves on there. Mm hmm. So, there we go. Awesome. So, even as it is now, it looks pretty cool, but there's a couple more stages we can do which really makes it stand out even more. Yeah. So um, I've went from the first stage, I'd have been happy enough to field it. The second stage, I'm definitely happy to field it. So, um, uh, anything is gonna make it even cooler <laughs> than that because we've only really spent a couple of minutes. So if I didn't have yeah, you gabbing yeah. during this, you, yeah. you'd, you would have had that pretty much complete. Yeah, yeah. it's this whole thing of these ones is, is they're quick to use. Um, you use them in conjunction with a quick technique mm -hmm. um, and you'll um, end up with it in no time. Okay, so uh, Brian, does it need to take time to dry or are we ready to um, move on to that No, next this, step? this stage, um, it's, uh, we're putting on such little amount of paint, it's already gonna be dry. We're not using the stencil again, mm -hmm. um, so we're not really getting much of a risk of uh, damaging what's there. Um, so what's next then? So the next part is uh, using what we mentioned earlier was the transparent paints. Okay. Um, so, so we've got the uh, 
the, the game These are the game here. ink range um, from Vallejo. So we have the violet and the blue. So yeah. violeta and azul. Yeah, so first off, we've got the blue. You could just use one of these. Yeah. Um, but it works out a lot better if you use two. Yeah. Um, so you, you, you think of a good combination. So with the blue, you could use green if you wanted to, but the blue and the purple really work well together. Or if you were doing it red, you could also use purple. Yeah. Um, just you just have a second colour there just to give it a bit more variation. Mm -hmm. um, so we'll go through that now. So this is the blue in there to start with. Mm -hmm. As you can see on my testing here, just one quick pass of it doesn't actually change the blue, the white very much. Yeah. But you can layer it on there and get a very different tone mm -hmm. just with one colour. But where I've got this black dot here, you see it doesn't really do much to the black at all. Yeah. And it'll almost disappear yeah. when it dries. So the, yeah. the idea with these, it's just going to change what's already there mm -hmm. rather than repaint anything. Yeah. Um, so we're going for this idea here. Um, mm -hmm. So we're going to feather in the dark blue. So there we go. So I'm going to layer it on here. And you'll see it gradually start to change the uh, the white. Yeah. And even just that one colour gives it a huge variation from the white to the black. Yeah. Um, so I've got just a small amount towards the front, and then I'm bringing it back, building it up more towards the back. You can also use that to put a shade in the actual recesses of the uh, vehicle there. Mm-hmm. And we're going to go over most of the areas with the with the blue, even just a small amount, just to change the uh, the light purple that we had yeah. to start with. It's such a lovely effect, the, the the transparent paints or inks as as Vallejo call yeah, them. Yeah, they they call them inks, but it. Uh, I mean, the idea of doing it this way, rather than using all the different colours um, that you could use to create the same effect, is with the stencil you only want to do the paint once. Because um, mm -hmm. if you move it while you're painting. Uh, it's going to ruin the effect. Mm -hmm. So it's got to be one shot with a stencil. Yeah. Um, and then your effect's applied in, a, in yeah. a more transparent way over the top. Yeah. So the stencil is creating a, almost like a texture then. The oh, it's, it's just give, making coloring. it look a bit more interesting. Mm -hmm. um, you could do something similar without it, but it's going to look 10 times cooler having this cool energy field or yeah. paintwork on it as well. Um, so this was the one here where I purposely left it a bit black. Mm -hmm. um, when I put the blue on, it's not really changing the black enough, not the same as the rest of the body. Yeah. Uh, it was on this side where it was a bit more purple. Right, just pull that into... On okay. here, yeah. uh, you can see it is picking it up more. Mm -hmm. um, you've, got, you've got to be careful not to overdo it with this stage, um, or you'll kind of cover up the scales you aren't too careful. I'm just going to make sure there isn't any areas of the light purple that I've missed. Or oh, it looks strange. Get around. Wow, yeah. Right, so that's stage three done. Mm-hmm. Pretty cool. It's looking awesome. It is looking awesome. Now, the uh, the final stage, uh, we're just going to uh, empty the blue out. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to bother doing a full clean here. Blue is very similar to purple. It's not going to matter if there's a touch of this blue in there still. Yep. Um, so I'm just going to empty it out and uh, chuck the purple in. Mm-hmm. So... Let's try that in there. Now, you, there will still be paint in here, um, mm -hmm. so you'll need to empty that first just by blasting onto the thing. 
You can see it's suddenly gone to purple. Yeah. So there's, there's no need to give it a full clean if, if you're just going from this way around. Yeah. If you want it to go to yellow, mm -hmm. you'll need to do a proper clean because you, you'll just end up with green. Yes. Um, so, but this will be fine for what we're doing here. Okay. Um, now, the idea here, again, you could stop there. Yeah. But you'll see in a minute, just adding this purple in as well is going to really put, make it pop. So we're going to come in from the back and, and feather in the purple in the same way as we did the uh, the blue. We'll also use it to shade certain areas. It's really adding a richness now yeah. to it, isn't it? To the colours. And the whole model is now starting to pop. Actually, where you're doing where you're doing that, it's there's a real sense of quality to it. Yeah, yeah. because you, the blue and the purple are quite similar, so it doesn't. It's not a massive difference, but when you look at it, it, it does yeah. really make it uh, pop a lot more. And you can layer in. What sometimes happens when you're airbrushing, you can get paint build up on the needle. Mm -hmm. So occasionally you'll need to. Uh, Clean that off while you're working. As these paints are so thin, because it's more of an ink, yeah. um, it happens a bit more often. So I've just done that now. So I can hear we've got this nice uh, recess. recess here. Yeah. Um, so I'm just going to lay the purple in there to make that look like it's got a bit of a shadow. Yeah. For, for a technique that, that that's so straightforward and so simple, it has such a a, a complex and interesting result. Well, that's right. When we, as you said, we, we've been talking for a lot of it, but yeah. the actual painting time, it takes minutes. And yeah. uh, you're then now going with your brushes and whatever else you normally would to do some edge heights and stuff. But... Do you, do you even need that? Yeah, well, the bulk of it's, um, bulk of it's pretty much you know, done there, you, you isn't you it? You paint so. the pilot and the weapons and things, and yeah, these engine pods here. Um, what you know? Do you need edge heights on it now? You know, it remains to be seen. You, you could do, but it, it looks <laughs> it looks pretty cool as it is. So, well, Brian, I absolutely love it. Um, guys, stay tuned because we've got a we've got a number of these little uh, little episodes where Brian's going to take us through some. Um, how to use a stencil, but also some tips on color choices and stuff like that as we go along. Brian, thank you, mate. And stay tuned, guys, and make sure and go and check out the Anarchy Models Kickstarter for the high-speed um, stencils.